Welcome to Words to My Face. We're giving you a definitive guide on how to win your fantasy football league this year. Now, there are lots of different types of fantasy football leagues out there. We're talking about the most common. One where it's a 10-team league. You start one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one defense, one flex player, and, because we have to, one kicker. Number seven. Never draft a defense or a kicker before the 10th round. Think about it. There are 32 teams in the NFL. There's only 10 teams in your league. What does that mean? You're guaranteed to get at least a top 10 defense. There's not that big of a difference between the number one and the number 10 defense every year. Now, some people out there might say, oh, the Seahawks defense was awesome last year. Got me like 200 points. Still not worth drafting before the 10th round. And if you have players that get more than one defense, then lucky you because they probably suck. Number six. Never draft a handcuff. A handcuff is where you draft the starter from a team and then you draft their backup. Who want to bank on your starter getting hurt? Think about it. No need to do that. There's plenty of other players out there that you can be guaranteed will start and get the majority of the carries every week. There's 32 teams in the NFL. There's 10 teams in your league. So even if everybody in your league drafts a number one, everybody can get at least three. Handcuffs are better left for free agency towards the middle of the season. Number five. Check your bye weeks, people. It's really easy to let this catch you up and really hurt you towards the middle of the season. Think about it. You draft five players with a week seven bye, what happens in week seven? You're screwed. So, check it out. It's not hard to do that research. Most leagues, while you're drafting, they tell you when the player's bye is. If you've already drafted two players with a week seven bye, Maybe you deprioritize some of the other players that you wanted that also have a week seven bye and up the priority on some of them that have a different bye week. Ooh. Try to stay away from players on your favorite team. A, your emotions get caught up too much in it and you usually overvalue the player. B, if you do have a week where both your team loses, the player plays bad, and then your fantasy team loses, man, that is a bad week. So try to stay away from it. Now, if you are a fan of the Chiefs, go ahead and draft Jamal Charles. If you're a fan of the Eagles, go ahead and grab up LaShawn McCoy. But other than that, try to keep your emotions out of drafting. Number three. Don't bank on sleepers, people. Sleepers are great picks, gems that you pick up in the 10th, 11th, 12th round. But if you start them right away, you never know what's going to happen. They're sleepers for a reason. They're untested. Here's the problem. You start them week one, two, three, and it turns out there's a reason nobody ever heard of them. Because they're no good. Wait a couple weeks, see if they're going to be consistently productive for you, and then you can start inserting them into your starting lineup. Number two. Only draft number ones. Now you heard me talk about this a little bit earlier, but this is very, very important. Don't draft the number two wide receiver on a team. Don't draft the number two running back on a team. Even if those teams are shown to use those players a lot, always go with the number one. Think about it. There's 32 teams in the NFL, there's 10 teams in your league. So that means every team for each position can have at least three number ones. There's a reason these players are considered number ones, and that is because they're the most consistently productive. Bank on them before you bank on any number twos. Now in the middle of the season, if you see the number one isn't performing as well as the number two, then maybe you can make a change but always go with the number one during the draft. Number one. Prioritize your positions, people. Don't get me wrong. Quarterbacks generally score the most points over the season, but there's a lot less of a difference between the number one quarterback and the number 10 quarterback than there is between the number one receiver or running back and the number 20 wide receiver or running back. Think about it. You start two, possibly three running backs and wide receivers a week, depending on which one you want to throw into your flex position, you only ever start one quarterback. And most people will draft their starting quarterback by the fourth round, meaning you have a couple rounds in there where you could stock up on some wide receiver and running back picks before you have to get your, your quarterback and still get a top 10 quarterback. So this has been the Words From My Face Definitive Fantasy Football Guide. Let us know if there's anything you think I missed out on. Hit me up in comments down below. Of course, at Words From My Face on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, Words From My Face at gmail.com. All good ways to get a hold of us. Like and subscribe the video, and we'll see you on the football field.
Number one, never draft a T a T fence. Never draft a T fence. <laughs> <laughs> you have an offense, a defense, and a T-fence. <laughs> Never draft them <laughs> for tea time. T-fence for tea time. <laughs> Block them from putting their sugar cubes in their cups. <laughs> Get them real honorary. <laughs> <laughs> we got some honorary Brits out there, so <laughs> careful.